UK Circuit Race Championships 2018. All right, so here's the beginning. I'm just going to go through the course. Uh, it's about between a minute, 32 minutes, depending how fast they're going. I think their fastest laps are like minute 20, minute 30, something like that. Anyway, so we have depending champion Tom Pidcock, uh, who's racing for Team Wiggins. We have uh, Madison Genesis with, you know, Connor Swift, who's just won the national championships and is looking good in the Tour Series. We also have just a lot of other riders. Uh, JLT just have, like, so many people who could win. John Mould, Matt Gibson, all the rest of the lads as well, potentially. Uh, and then 100% me have a couple of guys like Matt Walls, who won the Otley GP. Uh, and there are a couple others uh, for, Har like, Harry Tanfield, for instance, for Madison, if not for Madison Genesis, but uh, Canyon Iceberg. So you can see, it's not, not a huge field to begin with, but a lot of, all these guys at the back, they're really going to struggle. So anyway, Madison Genesis start to take it up. They look like they just want to make the race as hard as possible. That's what Connor Swift said in his interview. So we have this first sort of sweeping right-hander, not really too technical, um, and then, again, another right-hander, which is slightly more technical, but, again, pretty wide uh, around most of these corners, to be honest. Not too much problem. Uh, but then we get onto the real tight sections later on, uh, which make this course incredibly hard because it really is just strung out so much. Um, already you can see it's strung out, but these corners are not too bad because they are taken at faster speeds, but there's some super tight ones where they're going to be going really slow. So around these ones, again, there's a lot of right-handers um, just going into <laughs> pretty much... It's just absolute chaos here. Like, again, you can see, like, the corners are so narrow that you're not going to be able to take it at such speed that if you're not in, like, the first couple one, this one especially, if you can see, as soon as he's sprinting, the guys who are just coming through the corner now is going to be absolutely brutal. So the positioning, it just was one of those races where if you weren't in, the, like, the top 10, 15 already, it's just going to be chaos. You can see straight away absolutely strung out, and there's a lot of people who are just, like, miles back already. Uh, uh, Madison Genesis uh, are really just making this race as hard as possible. So you can see that like it's one of those races where it's never really going to slow down because everyone needs to be at the, uh, the front, front of the race. Uh, again, you got you got this last corner just before the sprint, so it's a pretty technical right hand around this corner, and then it's about 250 meters to go from that, that corner um, to the finish line. So most of the commentators were saying, you know, and uh, riders and team team directors were saying you need to be first around that corner uh, in order to win the sprint uh, down here. And it's like, also, I sort of believe this is on cobbles, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Um, it sort of looks like a little bit cobbly. But anyway, you can see Harry Tanfield's decided that, you know what, I, boys, I think it's time to go. And uh, Chris Latham, who's also a, a good track rider, decides that it's also time to go. Uh, and Harry Tanfield is one of those riders who is incredibly strong on the time trial um, and has a good sprint on him as well. So for these sort of races, he is very, very solid. Then later in the race, we have John Mould and Charles Page, um, who again decide to attack. JLT really and uh, Canyon Iceberg definitely wanted to sort of get a rider in the break uh, and just make sure they didn't have to do as much work. Canyon Iceberg didn't really have someone who I think could win the sprint, so they just needed to do that instead. Then Connor Swift decided that he wanted to replay Wembley and get in the break again with Tom Pickle. And Tom Pickle was like, yeah, let's go, good boys. So you can see Tom Pickle and Connor Swift, they're both in the break twice, actually, in a tour series of Wembley, um, with Tom Pickle winning that on that occasion. But these guys weren't really let free. One Pro were pretty good at chasing a lot of things down. And generally, also 100% me did a lot of chasing as well, just making sure that nothing really went up the road, to be honest. It was pretty obvious that from this point on, it wasn't going to happen. Tobin Horton again tried. Uh, Wiggins marked um, with Joe Walker and Dan Tullett uh, from 100% me also decided that it was time to get in the move. Uh, he's a form, I think he's the under 23 or junior cyclocross champion, uh, world champion, so he's a pretty solid boy. Uh, so yeah, you can see there's like, Madison Jones have a lot of riders at the front. JLT Condor have got a lot of riders. They always just have so many people there. Wiggins have a decent amount as well. Um, but you can see here, it's again, it's pretty strung out. Uh, most of the guys who you expect to be there are there. Uh, and then after this, pretty much, after this break, nothing really happened um, because people just knew it was going to be shut down. So here goes Tobin Horn. He's like, right, boys, time to go. Um, and then Joey Walker, who's this Wiggins rider, uh, is like, all right, I'm going to hop across as well. Uh, it's a pretty, I don't know, did anyone ride this? I've never ridden like in Stockton or any of these crit circuits, um, but it does look very, very, very good fun, to be honest. Uh, they are railing these corners. <laughs> these ones don't look too bad, but some of the other ones look real, real horrible. Um, and anyway, then John Mould decides that, you know what, it's time to go again. So old Mould gets on the front now, I believe, and just basically forces every other team to chase him down. Madison Genesis put uh, a rider on the front to chase him back. Um, and this is basically burning up a rider so everyone else on the team can 
just chill out. But you can see we've got group one, sorry, it's Tom Moses on the front, and then we have 100% me riders, uh, Tom Pidcock, uh, Matt Gibson's there as well. So Tom Moses is basically just killing himself now uh, in order to try and get Matt Gibson the win. He knows he's not going to get led away because so far every single raid that's gone has got chased back. So now we have the lead out. This is the last couple of laps to go. Um, we have, believe we now have Tom Moses again who's on the front. Then we have uh, Harry Tanfield's there, Matt Walls is um, that 100% me rider, then you have Matt Gibson, and then Tom Pickock is in there as well. Uh, and this was this was basically, a, just JLT had the most riders and basically ended up leading it out for Matt Gibson, and it, that was pretty much how it was going to end up. There wasn't really anything else going to happen. With three laps to go, it was pretty obvious it was coming down to a sprint, um, and Everyone sort of there knew it was going to come down to a sprint. No one attacked really because the pace was just far too high. You can see a lot of people are crying at the back here trying to, trying to hold on. Madison Genesis now take up the mantle um, and 100% me. Uh, sorry, Harry Tanfield then decides that oh maybe it's time to go. Harry Tanfield, I guess, he's not really going to win one of those sprints, but he might be able to um, you know, go away in the last couple of laps and he's very hard. Uh, to bring back, but unfortunately that did not happen. There's a couple splits in the peloton, but nothing too crazy. Matt Gibson is now at fourth wheel, Matt Walls is second wheel, a uh, third wheel, and then Harry Townfield is just ahead of him. Uh, again, Tom Pickock is not in great position at this moment in time. However, Tom Pickock moves up just at the right time, as you will see in a moment. So JLT Condor now, they've got in, getting a couple riders who are sort of getting towards the back. Uh, you can see Tom Pickock moves up a couple positions here. Uh, he's number one. Um, as he won this event last year uh, when he was a junior. It was an absolutely incredible, um, incredible scenes, to be honest, when he won. It was like, it was an uphill finish, and he just destroyed Harry Tanfield. I can't remember the other rider. It was a real, real solid finish from Tom Pigott. This one doesn't suit him as much as it is a flat drag race, but Tom Pigott is still an outrageously good crit rider, as you could see in the Tour Series uh, when he took out uh, Wembley. Very, very convincing. I think he might have got another one. Anyway, JLT Condor have now moved to the front, um, I believe, I'm not 100% sure who this rider is, to be honest. It's very hard to figure it out, it'll out. But with a couple laps to go, we're now getting down to the serious business. So we've got John Mould has just moved up in front of Matt Gibson. And John Mould is going to do an absolute outrageous turn coming up in order to make sure that Matt Gibson gets in the good position. Uh, at the moment, uh, everyone else is basically just panicking, trying to figure it out. What's happening, going on? Two laps to go. 100% me of a lot of riders, but I'm not really sure what that tactic was. 100% me are, are sort of like development riders for the British cycling team, so often they're not the most cohesive teammates, um, to be honest, because they're not... I don't know, it just never seems like they sort of seem to sort them all out, but they, they've got a lot of talent, those guys. Uh, you can see that we've got a lot of guys at the back who are just never really going to compete. Tom Pigott, if you can spot him, is just moving up on the left-hand side at this moment of time. Uh, and JLT Condor is still just stringing this out with Matt Gibson in third wheel now. And then John Moulds is in second wheel. Uh, and he's going to do a solid, solid lead out. Um, as you can see here, we have a lot of people who are just like not really going to compete in the finish. Uh, Harry Tanville, the two kind and iceberg people, they're not really going to be up there. Uh, it was really between, for me, Tom Tom Gib Tom Pidcott and Matt Gibson. Uh, those are the two the two favourites for me at this moment in time. As soon as it started to go for a sprint, uh, a lot of people like Connor Swift were never really going to win a sprint like this. Matt Gibson is a solid boy. Won a couple tour stages back in the day when he was 18, uh, and really just is an absolutely outrageously good rider. Um, Matt Gibson's in third wheel now, looking around, making sure no one's moving up. Tom Pidcock's now in that sixth wheel, and he really does need to move up. But the lad knows exactly what he's doing. Uh, he's he's very good in the pack, and you'll see just at this moment, uh, as soon as I believe this, to be honest, I actually have no idea. Um, I'll do a little subtitle to let you know who all these riders are because it was absolute chaos, and it's very hard to identify them all. But John Mould, I believe, does this final turn. Uh, I, just for the last lap, I think John Mould then just absolutely strings it out. See, on the left here, Tom Pickott then decides that it's time to move up. Uh, and he really sprints. He puts a lot of energy into this, but then he dive bombs into third wheel, into second wheel now, um, and he's in great position now, basically. Um, you can see Matt Gibson is there, and John Mould is now on the front, just absolutely driving it as hard as possible, just making sure no one can possibly attack, and that Matt Gibson is gonna maintain his position at the front of the pack, because for this moment in time, uh, you know, you've just got to keep strung out. Here comes John Mould again on the inside, just making sure he's absolutely dominating. This is now actually John Mould, who's just, doing this final last turn. The guy before, I believe, was Tom Moses. Tom Pickock's now third wheel, and you can see there's a lot of JLT are basically trying to make sure these guys can get off the front, so you'll see the guy in third wheel is taking the corners really badly, and here comes Tom Pickock, who's going on the inside, just making sure that um, 
JLT Condor can't play any sneaky tactics. Out of this corner, you can see he does a little bit of soft pelling, and then as soon as he runs, Matt Gibson's up to speed. He absolutely drills at John Mole to make sure that everyone who's not you know, quite far forward is really going to be hurt and it's starting to string out. Tom Pigott's the only guy who can really stay on that wheel and Tom Pigott is absolutely crying. You can see he's sprinting so hard to get on that wheel. Harry Tanfield as well is looking pretty pretty ropey. Uh, and then we have Tom Pigott takes this corner first, then Matt Gibson. And this is the corner where everyone said, if you're in first wheel, you're probably going to win this. Tom Pigott takes that corner nice and fast. Tom Pigott starts the sprint early and then Matt Gibson just hops on his wheel and then says, cheerio, Tom. I'm going for the win, and Tom Pigott does come close, but Matt Gibson just has too much speed. You can see he sits down in the saddle, clicks it up, and then just sprints again to fall the line. Matt Gibson, the absolute legend, took this uh, victory pretty, pretty convincingly from Tom Pigott. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bloody hell, that was the sh